Welcome back, you filthy exiles. So, I'm currently working away, but that isn't going to stop me from playing Endless Delve tomorrow in, or like in four hours. So, I had a look at a lot of different builds, mainly through SSF Hardcore, um, because there are some things that I guess we need to cover off on Endless Delve. So, we won't have access to bench crafting. I don't believe we'll have access to cluster jewels, so we can't really look at builds with heavy heavy cluster jeweling. Watcher's eyes are out of the question because we can't do elder. Um, it's going to be somewhat of a strain to find build guides for this in particular. So what I've actually done is went through path of building, and um, uh, sorry, not path of building, went through Poe Ninja, and then basically had a look at and benchmark different builds that I thought were you know, most reasonably viable, and we'll talk through each one of these, and I'll put the uh, the links in the description to the uh, POE Ninja pages, as well as the uh, the POBs, and obviously we'll we'll credit the um, the guys and the, the player names that um that actually put these together in hardcore SSF, uh, SSF hardcore, because it's not an easy feat to even get to a free, few hundred thousand DPS, um, in particular for Delve, and to survive it in hardcore. Um, a lot of the things that you'll need to remember for delve builds in particular will be pretty much any build that you play is going to be running determination. So the most important defensive layering in delve is actually armor. Um, you do need to max cap your resistances and that's just a given, like you have to do that with the normal game. But armor is pretty much going to be the biggest thing. You can pretty much play any build, to be honest with you, as long as it's got enough armor. And when I say enough armor, like 30 to 50,000 is like a good sweet spot but that'll only get you so far as to the whether or not there's any difficulty scaling or whatnot in delve tomorrow i'm not too sure um we'll find out when we load in um it could just be the standard delve um just an endless you know no uh, no need for sulfite gain um to be able to do it the ultimate goal as per on screen is to find a build that's we're probably not going to get demigod's authority which we would all love to have but you know it's probably not going to happen for most of us um however the goal is to get to level 95 because we want those sweet sweet freebies from ggg um in particular these ones that cost you know a, a few bucks in the store um that's pretty much my entire goal is getting the uh the mtx unlocks and just bragging rights get to like level 95 which isn't actually too hard to do in delve delve you level up very quickly but it can go pretty wry if you've got a really bad character now expectations for boss killing probably not going to be able to kill all architect should be moderately achievable and uh and the um the abyss boss down there should be there should be okay um, as long as you know the phasing and it, but all is just generally very difficult and um, and not a fun boss when you haven't got a geared up character. Anyway, this is a quick fight. Well, this is a this is five builds that you could potentially use. Um, there's plenty of others, um, and also if they may not be the first build that you use to go down a little bit in delve, you might want to play like toxic rain or something like that to level up and get the items that you need to sort of level up the second build that you're going to run as the main character but anyway let's talk about builds that you can play uh tomorrow and uh so yeah this is uh five builds that you could possibly play in endless delve okay so the first build that we're going to talk about here and i'm not going to open up the pobs just because it's too tedious to look at um compared to looking at this screen here this is pretty straightforward information it's actually the uh the bone breaker jug in particular this was by a player called bone breaker i guess um pretty uh, sorry bone shatter jug bone shatter um I played this build a couple of, or when it first came out last league, it wasn't a bad build, but the reason why I've picked this particular build and I'm providing this in this curation is it's relatively straightforward. Now, some of the things to look at, in particular the helm, you're not going to be able to get nearby enemies, take 9% increased physical damage, it's going to drop you down. We benchmark about 293k DPS, but that will be potentially higher with debuffing and things like that. This gets about 45,000 armor, but generally this stat doesn't pick up determination, buffing, and things like that. Um, the jug is generally very tanky and one of the better builds to take into delve if you're running a HP base. Um, 
the uh, ZHP or zero HP characters previously that we would have played aren't really possible anymore either because there's flicker strike spiders down in Delve, so you can forget playing zero HP builds that get one shot by that shit. Um, now, you're not going to get Krangled Rings, but this build pretty much just uses very generic gear, with the exception of Curse with uh, Enemies with Vulnerability, but you can pick those rings up down in Delve because there's plenty of physical um, physical damage nodes that operate down there. So a lot of these items are very targetable in Delve depending on the different uh, nodes that you go to or the biomes that you go into. Um, for example, the Armageddon Choker, potentially this amulet's achievable. Um, definitely the, um, the, the axe, you could get that down in Delve as a drop, um, but you get enough crafting mats in Delve that you can probably craft something reasonably similar to this. Um, and then obviously six link chest, like you get so many fusings dropping down there that, and you know, as you move down in the lower tiers of Delve, you get item level 85 and 87 items dropping up to 88, depending on the biomes that you're farming and your character's competency. Now, obviously the jug is going to be running your, your, pretty much your more tanky ascendancies um and this sort of shows that here but we won't go into any detail great amounts of detail um and the tree is relatively straightforward now if you can find a pillar of the god down in delve then you can switch this into strength stacking and the stat that you actually the stats that you get from stacking strength with pillar of the god are actually significantly higher so if you can get that and the business to drop down in delve you can increase your um your ability to do damage probably push that up to like six seven hundred thousand dps plus and then basically just focus on stacking a shitload of armor and getting physical damage reduction in your tree and also increased um increased hp but anyway i'll chuck this down in the in the description below um it's not realistic that you're going to get enlightened and because it's a 10 day league it's not really realistic that you're going to get it to level three either um within a reasonable amount of time but sort of everything else here is somewhat doable um to a degree uh you won't get awakened brutality so we can scrap that automatically but i guess the biggest sell point for this partic particular build is just the sheer resistance to damage um which is basically one of the most important factors to consider when you're delving is not so much the overall damage that you deal but the ability to take large quantities of damage anyway this would be the first build that i would look at um when considering what to play tomorrow and there's plenty of variations of this build but this one was one that stuck out to me because there's no use of cluster jewels or any jewels really it's just good tree setup anyway um yeah let's get on to number two Okay, so the second one is actually by uh, Kieran Krangled, which is a Saboteur Trapper. Uh, Seismic Trapper, sorry, Saboteur. Um, we're probably going to see a lot of these builds, mainly because you can stand back and you don't have to worry about actually getting involved with fighting the enemy head-on. Um, generally, with Delve, you, if you're playing a character that can't really take a, a whipping, then you don't really want to be getting close to enemies. The caveat here is we only have... 125 armor but we have 14,000 evasions so this is more of an evasion targeted build as opposed to an armor based build um the reason why i picked this one is just jamming is relatively straightforward the setup is pretty easy now obviously you're not going to get this sort of chest that's just insane that's not going to drop a delve and these other items here like percentage roll max life uh belts not feasible um and also this here you know you actually you can get elder gauntlets to drop in delve so uh this isn't practical in per se but with the crafting mats that uh, sorry this is this is shaper with the crafting mats you can get in delve you know there is a likelihood that you could roll this but you're not going to be able to bench craft on stuff so that's another problem that we're going to have to deal with um uh outside of that this is pretty straightforward it does use a watcher's eye and a lethal pride but we're not we're just going to ignore that and obviously that's going to reduce the damage stat um by somewhat of an amount which is you know as expected however tree is straightforward no cluster jewel setups um you know we're using ghost dance we're using lethal shade uh less shade um and the saboteur has the native ability to mitigate a lot of different damage types i'm pretty sure it can't be ignited and things like that um so pretty good build uh you could also look at alternative builds such as like gc mines um which i played a few leagues ago and glacial cascade mines are actually quite powerful powerful in delve i haven't tested that for a few leagues but 
there's every likelihood that GC miners will do well as well, or mine builds in particular will do well in Delve, mainly because you're staying away from enemies and you're coming near enemies. If, if you're avoiding even the confrontation of damage, you've got the highest likelihood of surviving. There's really only two ways to operate in Delve, and that is either running headfirst into the fight or standing back and letting something like you know stone golems or mines or uh, traps do the, do the hard yards for you. Um, anyway, this would be the second build that I would recommend, and I'll put the the, um, the links and description uh, and the links in the POV in the description for you to have a look at. The next build that I actually looked at was uh, this one by uh, Bros Mike Revolves, um, which is an Eye of Winter uh, Inquisitor. Now, a couple of things on this that we're just going to have to ignore is the fact that Astramentus. You actually no, I've had that drop in Delve. So it's potentially it's going to drop, but it's unlikely it's going to drop within 10 days. Let's just assume that you're not going to get uniques like that. Crown of the Inward Eye is not feasible as well, but you get plenty of helms that drop within Delve that will give you ample amounts of armor. So I don't think it's unreasonable to look at a build with this. Um, Molnir, that's not necessarily going to drop in Delve, but that's the whole reason why this build uses an Astramentus. So in the absence of that, um, you don't really need the Astramentus and you can switch this out with something else. Now, literally all this is doing is proc Hydrosphere and the reason why you proc Hydrosphere is to uh, trigger exposure, exposure on enemies, which increases your damage. Um, but as far as cast on Crit Eye of Winter goes, this is set up on a on a Tabula Rasa. Now, this, this does get some of these gems from what I can see. Now, it doesn't even get buffed by the socketed um, duration gem um, buff so I'm unsure as to what this guy was doing here but um, more power to him there was no real need to have another piece of chest armor on here um, but Eye of Winter is just really good it hits a lot of enemies in quick succession cast on crits really easy to scale on the Inquisitor this only has one cluster jewel which is actually just stacking um, crit which is for quick getaway and precise retaliation this could actually be picked up elsewhere in the tree. The tree's really straightforward. As I said, Inquisitor's, you know, somewhat tanky as well. Now, you're not going to get a Shaper's Touch. That doesn't really matter, though, because you don't need a Shaper's Touch um, for most of these builds. Well, for any of these builds, Shaper's Touch is not really necessary. It's just a nice to have in this situation. Realistically, you know, we're looking at health and stacking armor. Now, this does use Determination. I'm pretty confident that anyone who plays this and I might actually play this tomorrow myself because I haven't played Eye of Winter and I'm keen to play it. Um, pretty confident that you could get this armor up significantly. And also, if you stack more crit um, on your amulet, you're going to get a better result there. Now, this one's looked at balancing Chaos Resist, I'll be honest with you. You don't really need too much Chaos Resist in Delve. It's mainly about max capping your standard resistances and pushing armor up. So this is a bit of a waste if you're going to take that into, uh, into Delve itself. But that being said, you know, more power to you. If you can get Chaos Resist in your build with such a limited amount of time, then there's nothing wrong with doing that either. The other thing is the Benchcrafts aren't going to be possible. Um, looking at the jewels, you can get these to drop in Delve and potentially craft them. So they're not completely unrealistic, though. These jewels are like double stacked crit, uh, crit damage multi. So it's not necessarily going to be easy to roll that. Um, Outside of that, yeah, I've had um, so, um, overflowing chalices drop in Delve and everything, though you won't be able to craft that when charges reach its full, um, which is actually a bit of a pain in the ass in Delve. But cast on crit characters generally do very well in Delve just because you're constantly hitting enemies. If you've got Leech or any any um, life on hit, um, so potentially if you switch one of these gems out and have life on hit or an item or actually even a claw that does life on hit, uh, which is probably what I would do in this case is run life on hit claws um, then that's going to increase your survivability significantly and obviously you got split between energy shield and life anyway so this is not too bad um, you're not really going to get max block out of this either because you are nowhere near any block nodes unless you um, yeah max block's not really going to be a thing with this build um, anyway, yeah, Eye of Winter, worth looking at, um, that'd be my pick for number three. I'm probably going to play this tomorrow or something similar to this. Um, I'm sort of stuck between the, uh, Bone Shatter and the Eye of Winter right now, but I'm going to figure that out in the next few hours, but I thought I'd just give people a bit of a point in that direction. I think this build will, uh, be something decent to play tomorrow. 
The next one I'm actually really torn on as well. So this is done by Lazy Barbecue and obviously SSF uh, Scourge League. Um, so, you know, uh, can't buy items, got to farm them. Um, now, the only thing here is you're not going to get a surrender in Delve, not necessarily, because it drop does. I don't believe it drops from the overall pool, and it only drops from like uh, doing Zoff. So that we can rule that out, but we don't really need it anyway. You just need a decent shield. Um, but basically, how this build works is you set up your spell slinger set up for detonate dead and volatile dead. Um, there's also a spell slinger set up with um, desecrate and cascade support. And for anyone who hasn't played Spell Slinger before, what that basically means is you reserve mana, and then when you use a, a, a basically a default wand attack, it casts those spells and blows everything up. Uh, so the small damage stats here are actually stacked by the number of corpses. So if you have like 30 corpses, or 20 corpses, it's 39,000 times 20, which, do the math, and I don't feel like doing right now, isn't too bad. That's decent damage. Now, the armor-wise on this build is quite good. Um, you know, 32,000 isn't too bad. I think a lot, of, pretty much all of these were like 250 to about 500 delve in SSF, and that's not too bad of a push point for an endless delve league, considering you can't really like do mirror tier, tier builds. Um, the other thing is like the helm has, you know, increased mana reservation efficiency. That's not necessarily going to be easy to roll, so it wouldn't get your expectations up and looking at this tree. And same with the uh, the bench crafting for the wand, you're probably not going to be able to craft that as easily or get that at all in the endless delve event. But this is actually just a really simple build. It does use one large cluster jewel, which quite frankly you could repurpose and you don't need to use. You could find those points elsewhere on the tree to push that damage up. But, um, and obviously a Thread of Hope, which you're not going to get access to. Um, now, it does use Uncompromising, which does uh, Reservation Efficiency for the use of Determination, but I'm sure that there would be ample opportunities to be able to adjust that within the tree as well. Um, so, actually, what I can see here is the nodes that would be taken for... Um, uh, God, uh, mana reservation efficiency haven't been taken here, so instead of taking your um, your large cluster there, you would just move up into these nodes and then take those nodes, which sit around here. Um, that's pretty much this build. I'll put this in the description as with the others. I think this is a pretty viable build, to be honest with you. Um, and really, like the only thing you need to worry about is getting enough attack speed on your base wand attack so that you're, um, you're constantly able to keep Spell Slinger up and keep enemies off you. But I think this is actually quite a viable option for um, for pushing into Endless Delve. Um, and this would probably work quite well. Um, does use a bit of a Spectre setup too. And like there's plenty of things to pull Spectres, Spectre minions and biomes that you can pull Spectre minions from in Delve as well. Uh, to my understanding. Um, so yeah, I think this would be reasonably viable um, for tomorrow. And actually he's using Frenzy here, which is when you do frenzy then it'll cast your spell slinger and yeah anyway this is my fourth pick of uh, i guess a recommended item that you could use for uh delving all right the last one actually i think someone posted in the uh in the comments on the post i put up about the video this particular video that i was going to work on they wanted to see a cyclone build well i had a look and there was actually one that was not too bad. Now, it is contingent on getting an Abyssus, so we're just going to hope to hell that an Abyssus drops um, to get that, you know, uh, that critical strike multi, uh, critical multi scaling as well as, you know, f base physical damage. But that being said, um, this is just your standard everyday um, staff wielding cyclone um, shockwave slayer. Which, in having a look at this, like, this is not the highest level of DPS for Shockwave, but obviously this is SSF Scourge, and this is a Delve build, that, or this is a build that a guy was using to get to, like, 300 or 400 Delve, something like that. Um, now, pretty much looking at this, the chest piece isn't so unreasonable that it, it wouldn't be achievable, but it's not necessarily going to be easy to achieve. Staff's only up to 553 DPS, and there's nothing really special on this staff as well. Um... And outside of that, it's mainly just stacking a shitload of damage wherever you can using a Praxis, which is, I would admit, a little odd, but not a bad option because it's a cheap source of total mana cost of skill reduction. Um, 
Yeah, and also generating mana on taking damage. Uses about, you know, 20, nearly 21,000 armor. Um, you know, frenzy charge generation, everything like that. Uh, obviously, overleech is involved in this as well, and culling hit, so that will clear enemy packs really quickly. Um, just a really easy build to build. Uh, it does use a watcher's eye, you know, impales that impale roll you're just not going to get that and that's rare by standard game mean and this is what i mean like it's really hard to um determine the viability of these builds because there's no real build guides for endless delve uh, because it's only a 10 day event so i can only really sort of give you an idea of how to build the tree and and refer that back to you know practical application um, but this is actually a pretty consistent build and to be honest with you from what I've seen from the drops in Delve I can't see where you wouldn't be able to get either the currency from within Delve or the rolls or whatnot from doing Delve itself or the drops themselves to be able to do this um, do this particular build up the way that it's sort of shown here and obviously you won't be able to roll on the all elemental resistances and things like that so you're gonna have to work around that and craft it the old-fashioned way because um, you won't have bench crafting um, as, far, as far as I'm aware, but nothing here I see is not viable to do. So this is my fifth option of what you could do for Endless Delve, just old school cyclone. Um, yeah, pretty sure it says unwavering stance too. Yeah, it has unwavering stance, so can't be stunned, which is pretty important with cyclone. Just means you're going to get hit a lot. Um, it could probably do with better armor stacking um that would be my only thing finding out finding a way to in, introduce more armor into this build would be more just more advantageous to the build itself um it's not actually i don't it does use yeah it does use determination um anyway this would be my fifth um sort of recommendation if you so chose to uh to want to play a slayer that does cycle all right so i hope this gives people a bit of an idea of what to play in the morning i'm sorry this video is coming out as late as it is only a few hours before the event the main reason for that is i've been working away for the last few days and i'll be away for the next week as well so i'll be endless delving i will be streaming uh at about probably 5 36 a.m tomorrow morning uh, when the event starts but i'll be uh, sort of doing that from another location as well um but yeah anyway um i hope this sort of gives you some ideas these aren't absolutes and i know people go you are this just is not gonna work rah, 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 use all stuff like that but the reality is like there's not a lot of videos that give you a real good idea on delve endless delve guides and on top of that there's no you know it's a one-off event it's really hard to curate I guess a list of specific builds that you can play in a 10 day event because we just don't make build guides for this sort of thing and maybe that's actually something that that you know creators like myself need to start doing um and actually now it's giving me an idea maybe that's exactly what i do um in this event but uh anyway um until next time like and sub and uh also i've started the discord up so feel free to jump in in the live stream and um and i'll be jumping into the discords moving forwards i'm not always in there it's a, just a time commitment thing um but i'll try and be in there as much as possible i've also been sort of struggling with uh keeping on top of the comments in the comment section so i'm sorry if there's delays in responses i am trying to get to everything but you know it's i've got to find the, enough time to be able to do it um, but that's no excuse. I will try my best. Anyway, until next time, uh, have a good one and, uh, bye.